The opinions expressed over WRNG North Atlanta are not necessarily those of Ring Radio Management or Ring Radio Advertisers. 68 Ring with Neil Bortz. Okay. 735, 73 degrees, 2619764 is our number. Back to the phones. Goodbye, good luck. Now push the button. You said you were going to. I was going to what? Push the button. On you, Kitty? Yeah. I wouldn't do that. You know where I live. You'll vandalize my house. You'll... No. You will roll my yard. Well, who knows? Anything is possible. I suppose so. Well, you know, it's strange you should mention that, Neil, because I thought as a special surprise for you that in the personal columns of the Tucker neighbor, I would just put your address so everybody could come by and see you. Uh, Kitty? Wouldn't that be a surprise? Kitty. Yes. Hell hath no fury, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> you know what I would do to you if you were to do that? I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> what? Uh, oh, well, let's see. I'd reverse the polarity of your plumbing in your home. <laughs> I'd, I'd think of something just really absolutely hideous to do to you if you did that. I wouldn't blame you a bit. That would be a bit much. You just never can tell who would just come walking into my house at any hour of the evening or night. Well, yeah, I, you know, it must, uh, that would be bad, just uh, not to have any privacy at all. Yep. Well, who's going to take care of your spineless yucko while you're gone? Uh, don't you think it'll go a week? I'm more concerned about who's going to take care of the gerbils. Oh, Dear me, well, I don't think they'd go a week. Uh, you want to you take them for a week? Do you think that your gerbils would last over here? I've got two dogs and a cat. Kitty? Yes. When I leave today, the gerbils are going to be out in the, in the garage. <laughs> and and if, the, if I come back and they're little stiff gerbils, I will hold you personally responsible. My Lord, now, Neil, let me tell you... Kitty, I'm not kidding. We don't have any... We don't know the neighbors there yet. There is nobody around that we can leave the gerbils with. They've been with us for a couple of years now. Huh? And uh, somebody's... They're, they're in a little fishbowl with a little wire thing on the top, and they got a little wheel that squeaks at night that they can race around. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is just gotta give, give them a carrot... And, uh, and and a little water, and they'll sit in there and engage in their little illicit sexual activities and won't bother anybody. Well, how, I don't know a thing about gerbils. How often do they have to be fed? Well, it, it's not the, fee you know, just maybe uh, once or twice during the week, they'll, they'll store the stuff. It's the water. They'll die, you see. Oh, dear. If, if we leave them at home. And I really would, you know what Lori did to me with the chipmunk, don't you? No. You don't? I, if it's bad, I don't want to hear it, because I love chipmunks. Well, she, I was walking home from the school over there the other day and saw a cat attack a chipmunk, and she just hauled off and kicked the hell out of that cat and grabbed the chipmunk and took it home and tried to save its life. But uh -huh. She was unsuccessful. I love chipmunks. Yes, I do, too. They're cute. She wrapped it up in a towel and tried to keep it warm and everything, but the, it expired. Uh -huh. Well, the next morning I get up, and I'm all bleary-eyed, and, and I... Uh, mm. I take a shower and get out of the shower and grab the towel to dry off. And as I pick the towel up, this chipmunk comes flinging out. You know, I just almost died. Oh. It was horrible. Well, listen. Now, I'm going to Florida next Thursday. When what? are you coming back? Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure. But uh, you, you can make arrangements. Uh, the gerbils will be on the back porch, Kitty. Okay. Well, uh, now tell me one more time what to do with them. Well, uh, we'll have a bag of feed with them, so just keep, just, just give them a little bit of seed, maybe a carrot. We'll have a couple of carrots in there, and just make sure their water stays full. Okay, well, we'll take care of it. Okay, Kitty, you're a doll. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Well, I just took care of the gerbil problem uh, uh, here. Two six one nine seven six four seven. Let's see. You notice how good Phil Schaefer is at saying goodbye to people? Well, he worked at WSB before he came to Ring Radio, and... <laughs> They've got memos over there, pre-printed. <laughs> this is to announce the resignation of blank, who resigned on blank, effective blank, to join W blank 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 as blank. And then a stamp for Elmo's signature. It's really, uh, really amazing over there. Well, anyway, 
9764 is our number, and you are on Ring Radio. Yeah. Joe! Hey, this is Joe Tidwell, Southern Bell. Hey, Joe, Southern Bell. How's the phone company doing today? We're just cranking the call up out, yeah. <laughs> hey, look, me, my brother, you know, Coach Joe Tidwell at uh, Georgia State. Right. All the people at the East Marietta Exchange want to wish you a speedy recovery. <laughs> recovery from what? Uh, maybe I don't have the right deal board. <laughs> yeah, this is the right one. Well, what, just what is happening with you? Hey, Joe. Yeah? Thank you for helping me get Andy's phone number. Oh, no sweat. Yeah. Anytime. Uh, we, I'm, I'm going to miss you in Southern Bell. You know, Joe, I think I'm one of your greatest customers that over the last uh, over the last 10 years, I figure I've taken about 120,000 phone calls. 120,000 phone calls? Did you give any back? Uh, a few. We made a few. We, we made a few. I think about 200 of those are from Andy. Yeah, probably. Um, I'll have to think about that, Neil. <laughs> ask, ask Frank. He'll fill you in. Okay, look. Um, now, if if you need your phones cleaned out down your office, we're going to do it personally for you. We don't have to do it, you know. Well, Joe, I'll remember that. And the next and the next time y'all blow out the phone lines, I just make sure that Frank gets a hold of me in case I'm not not listening to the radio that yeah. morning. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good luck. You're super, Joe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. It's 75 degrees. It's 68 WRNG. Here's Transit Tongue. Every time I go to open my briefcase, I've got the combination set. I'm going to have to change the combination. Here's the book we have this morning at 9 o'clock. Okay. This is interesting because... Uh, it, the name of the book is The Law of the Land, The Evolution of Our Legal System. Charles Rembar wrote it, and he's going to be my guest this morning at 9, which I think that's rather ironic, don't you, that, uh, that I'm uh, leaving to practice law and put this guy on the, uh, on the air the last, last thing? Put the book right over there. 2619764 is number, and uh, uh, this is the swan song Neil Board's program, Mark Chataway from Vidalia, Georgia. He'll be with you next week. And then who's going to follow after that? Uh, Lord, I just don't know. Hello. Good morning. Same to you. I wanted to send you something fun as long as the going away present. Are you the one who sent me this puzzle and the nasty letter? No. Oh. But my husband made me get out of the mailbox. <laughs> so anyway, what are we going to do? You won't be here for election year to tell us how we voted, stupid? And you won't be here when jackpot hits the jackpot? You, I mean, what are we going to do then? You know what I'm going to do with jackpots on, on, on July the 1st, don't you? Mm. I'm timing my vacation so that I can come back from Florida on that day. Yep. I'm going to stop by Reedsville. Watch the lights dim. I'm, yeah, I'm going to, I'm, well, I'm going to, I'm going to hire the high school band to sit there and, 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 uh, and play something. What would be a good song to have the band playing outside the prison when Jack Potts rides old Sparky? Food for thought. Yeah, help me think. What would be a good song? When the lights go on again, all over the world. Yeah, yeah, that'd be... Uh, oh, yeah, I got it. Come on, baby, light my fire. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's good. Put some thought to it, but I'm going to quit getting up early. Well, I'm going to sit down there, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold a ribbon. Uh, me and a friend of mine got to hold a ribbon uh, in front of the phone booth, and the ribbon is going to be the finish line for Millard Farmer the next time he makes his 100-yard dash out of, the, uh, out of the prison down there. Jackie's going to let us appeal! <laughs> and I'm going to trip him just before he gets to the phone. Splat. Yep. Splat's the word. That's what it sounds like when it hits the sidewalk. We'll see you around town. Thank you. Watch it, Bortz. You can get carried away today. 2619764 uh is is the number old uh marta matron is going to give us the traffic and we're going to check on some other things and more phone calls on ring radio and i uh, just uh, somebody just brought me the station's little going away present to me and i must say that i am glad to get the final paycheck uh so last one i think i'll frame it 72 degrees and you're on ring yes neil Oh, gee, I have a lot of things to say to you. Well, first of all, what song are we going to hire the uh, Hey Hire a High School Band uh, to play outside of the Reedsville or whatever prison it is when Jack Potts uh, uh, gets a big charge out of life? Happy Days Are Here Again. That'd, that'd, that'd work. 
that that would be most fitting. There, there are there's there's some other songs, but I can't think of the titles right now. While we're here, why don't we choose a new capital for Pennsylvania in case Three Mile Island goes again? <laughs> that would be very good. What about Washington? Aren't they going to need a little bit of uh, revamping themselves? Oh, uh, they need a little bit of something. Yes. In the time since you've come back on the air from your former vacation, and I was one of the callers called you on the first day, several, I made several personal accomplishments, uh, which I give partial credit to having listened to you, uh, just acquiring a more positive outlook on life and starting to get into Tan Rand a little bit. I'm in the middle of the Fountainhead right now. Oh, boy. Which I wish I had read before I read Atlas Shrugged. But uh, not overly sorry. They're both excellent books. And uh, also, I've become a non-virgin in more ways than one. Oh, good. Congratulations. How was it? That, well, I, I should say it was a very enlightening experience. Oh, wonderful. Uh, main thing I'm going to miss about you is that uh, we're not going to have any more impossible quizzes, and we're not going to have anybody else flush the lines. There was nobody that could flush the lines like you could flush the lines. Well, just natural talent, I suppose. Well, it was natural talent. And have y'all decided on a ring finger award for your last day? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Well, let me, let me just say this. I'm not thinking too clearly today anyway. I'm just, uh, my mind's looking three or four hours ahead of now when I, uh... When you get to walk away from the studios for the last time. No, when I get to head off to Florida. Yes. Well, I'm, all, I'm also thinking other things like how disgusting Gloria Vanderbilt is and how much I hope Jimmy Carter doesn't get her, uh, elected president of the United States again. And uh, Can I tell you something interesting? Yes. I've had some conversations in recent weeks with various high-ranking officials of uh, some of the nation's largest and some of the nation's smallest banks. You see, you're seeing the prime rate drop right now. Right. These people are scared to death of Jimmy Carter being reelected. Uh, they say if, if, if Jimmy Carter is reelected president of the United States, that by this time next year you'll be looking at a 25% prime rate. I wouldn't doubt it. They're just scared to death of Jimmy Carter being elected president again. He is such, such an incompetent, lying country hick. Yeah. It's, it's because of... It's it's because of men like that and what we've got like that in Congress that are making it hard on people like me. I've reached one of my personal goals in the past few years of becoming a self-sufficient businessman. In other words, I'm, I, I depend on nobody else for my paycheck except by my own abilities. Uh, pretty well self-employed. Well, that's what I'm heading into. Uh, one other thing, just on behalf of the callers. Uh, you say the ringmasters are not supposed to get this, but I believe we ought to award you the class ring award. Me? You. No, I don't have any. Cl I don't have any class. Well, you've had plenty. <laughs> you've taught plenty of classes, at least to the callers. Oh, that's nice of you to say. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Okay, bye bye. You're on Ring Radio. How about you light up my life for the song? You light up. <laughs> That'd be good. That'd be good. Question for you. Did you ever get to throw the snake on Ludlow? Huh? Did you ever get to throw the snake on Ludlow? I guess today's the last day for me to throw the snake on Ludlow. I heard you talking about it. I didn't know if you ever followed through or not. Mm, no, I guess today's my last day. Uh, uh, you light up my life. That's good. This weather forecast, uh, afternoon high in the mid-80s, fair to partly cloudy tonight, and low of 67 overnight. John Bleakley Ford brought you that one at 72 degrees. Take a quickie before the break. Hello. Do you remember in the Muppet movie where Mel Brooks was the mad professor and he was fixing to uh, do the put uh, Kermit in the little machine there? Yeah. Remember what he told him? There's going to be a hot time in the old skull tonight. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. I've been sitting here trying to think of all kinds of things to say. But, but look, before I get onto that, let me say something about something that happened about uh, two, what morning was it you were talking about the draft? The morning before last? Oh, several, but yeah, earlier this week. Uh, one morning in particular, you were uh, you had a collar, and it was a, it was a, I would say, young young woman. I tell you what, hold on a second, okay? Hold on, let me get your comment, but we got to take this pause first because Bus Breath wants to give you the traffic. 
And uh, she brought me some of her, uh, uh, a present from Marta yesterday. Boy. Well, you, you want a going away present? <laughs> <laughs> Don't sound so broken up, Steve. <laughs> I've just been waiting for you to explode on me this morning, Neil. That's all. What do you, you want know, me to do? I, nothing. Oh, uh, you, you, you all been into the juice over there again, haven't you? <laughs> no, this, this, this is, this is the last time I'll be able to talk to you. Now I'm going to probably be going back to talking to the flight service for my. Well, by the way, do you have an aviation weather forecast for us this morning, in case anybody wants to go flying? Winds aloft, temperature, dew point, all that sort of stuff. I, um, well, I don't have it with me now. <laughs> Well, hell. Yeah. We'll just make them call flight service then. Yeah. But anyway, we'll have... What know, about the weekend, Steve? Looks pretty good. We'll just have about a 20% chance for shower, thunder shower tomorrow, and then just fair on Sunday. So we'll, temperatures should be about low to mid-80s for the highs the next couple of days, and uh, probably lows in, in the mid to upper 60s. So it's going to be pretty pleasant for this time of year, about the best we can expect, really. Well, I think that's just wonderful, don't you? I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I know. Are you going to go play golf? No, you're not. You're not the golfer. I'm not the golfer. No. Who, who's the big golfer? That's Keith. Keith. Yeah. yeah. It will be good. All right. Have a good day now. I will. Okay. That's Steve Thompson. Just think. Never in my entire life will I talk to that turkey again. Probably. Seven twenty-four and a half at Ring Radio. I am not going to miss you and Steve in the morning together. <laughs> I'll miss you, but I won't miss you two together. Well, now, what's the matter with me and Steve? I don't know. There's just something about the what, the what you two do to the weather. I, I can't quite put my finger on it. We don't do anything to the weather. We report the weather. Okay. The way you report the weather. Uh, I was going to tell you What can you say about a nymphocumulus cloud? Uh, I don't guess anything. Uh, the, uh, the other morning, uh, you were talking about the, the draft, and, I, and a, woman, a young lady or a woman called anyway that had lost her husband in Vietnam, and she made the comment that she had also lost her brother-in-law. And, you, you know, I detected, you know, emotion in her voice and all, and, you know, and it, it, it sort of... What did I say, something crude to her? No, you, 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 were, you were very understanding, I thought. But uh, the, the, uh, the thing of it was, I, I work over in Dunwoody near the uh, George Power Microwave Tower, and as I come, I'm in the car, usually I come through there, I get a little interference from that other radio station that has the tower over on La Vista Road. And, but as I'm driving along, all of a sudden, you know, this, this woman's talking, you know, and I hear this America in the background, you know, and it was just, woo you know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she was like, and I thought, well, is he doing that, or am I picking, you know, so I flipped over just to make sure, and sure enough, they were, you know, at the same time they had been playing uh, John Wayne America, you know, Why I Love Her, and, uh, but, I, you know. They I, always play the hits. Yeah, I just thought that was sort of ironic, but uh, just thought I'd tell you about that. Boy, I almost live underneath their tower. You can imagine the interference I get all the time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, take care. It's been fun, and uh, we'll miss you. Well, thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 73 degrees at 68 ring radio. Neil. Uh-huh. Before I ask you a real serious question, I want to mention something about a guy you set up on the clock radio. When did you get out? Oh, I don't know. One of these days. Oh. The um, other morning, uh, he scared the absolute hell out of me because he came on, and now I had the volume was turned up. I didn't realize it. And you were yelling at somebody, and that's just when the radio quit on, and I didn't know what was happening. What was I yelling? Fire or something like I that? I remember. I was not that awake. <laughs> You should never set your... Well, yeah, you should, but you can have some very interesting things happen setting a clock radio to a talk radio station. Yeah, what were you doing this morning, though? Firing a machine gun or something? Oh, we were killing whooping cranes. Yeah, that's when I woke up, and I, I was trying to figure out what was going on. I'm glad I had the volume turned down. I am, too. I'm so happy for you. Okay. Uh, really, a very serious question for you. Would you do me a favor? Speak up and speak directly into the microphone. You, look, you sound like you're talking to toilet tissue. I always ask you for a character reference, Neil. Nope. Speak directly into the phone. Damn. Okay. Uh, Damn. Phone company phone. Uh-huh. Oh. Um, the candidate I would prefer to vote for on a general principle, presidential election. Ed Clark. No, actually not. I think the same one you probably uh, would like to vote for, or will vote for. Who? I think it's going to be the same one you're going to vote for. Reagan? Yeah. Yeah. There's two or three points that he is supporting things, at least I understand he supports things, which I cannot 
in any way, shape, form support. Who, Clark? No, Reagan supporting a few items. Okay, very quick. What are they? Okay, the, uh, particularly say Jesse Helms' uh, proposal for modifying Supreme Court jurisdiction on prayer in school. Nope, I don't. I don't agree with that. Okay, if you've got something, I am very, very, very strongly against that. I am too. What do you do when the person you'd like to support supports something himself that you cannot support? You have to balance it. I mean, what do you want? Ronald Reagan with a few warts on his nose or Jimmy Carter with a bad le case of leprosy? I don't know. These are a couple of things I really don't like about Reagan are things Carter does support or I agree with Carter on. But it's a very hard, difficult situation. You know, I think that's a good way to explain Carter. He's got mental leprosy. That's true, but every now and then he does make sense on a few items, and unfortunately those items are the ones I agree with. Okay. Well... Uh, even a mental leper will come up with something intelligent every once in a while, I guess. 73 degrees, 2619764. Uh, traffic lips going to come along with the uh, traffic and then sports. This is Jamata Traffic Watch. Traffic is building at the Brookwood Interchange as you're traveling in from the northeast and northwest expressways. At the Brookwood Interchange, there's moderate to heavy southbound traffic moving in at about 35 to 30 to 35 miles an hour from I-85 and moving in heavier and slower on I-75 at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. When you get to the downtown connector around 14th Street and 10th Street, the southbound traffic moves at about 30. Northbound traffic on the at the downtown connector as you're leaving from William Street through the Brookwood Interchange is just moderate and moving nicely, moving the speed limit, as a matter of fact, at I-75 and I-85. This is your Marta Traffic Watch. Oh, they gave me the squeaky chair again. Thank you, Beverly, for that. Sports Central USA coming up from CBS here on 68 WRNG. And then we'll be back with more two-way conversation on the Neil Bortz program Friday, June 20th on Ring Radio. Thomas, our tennis court is packed with Sony beta cassettes. I know, dear. You see, Sony has this fantastic buy two and save deal on twin packs of L500 and L750 beta cassettes. Thomas, there's a Sony trailer truck in the driveway. I know. I think Sony videotape is the best with its picture-perfect pictures. After all, they invented beta cassettes. Either the tapes go or I go. Where are you going? Back to the Sony dealer to get more buy two and save twin packs. You won't see me again. Oh, yes, I will. I've got you recorded on Sony beta cassettes. Bye. Oh. How do you put the uh, THC into, a, into pill form? And that's something to get you high on grass and then out at your income tax. 73 degrees, 2619764. Traffic and weather and all that coming up on Ring Radio. You say, Frank, that somebody just brought me a big snake? Great. Frank's got a burlap sack out there in the studio with a big, looks like a chicken snake in it. That's great. 2619764. Hello. Oh, no. Neil B. Neil B.
That's great. Neil? If you people, I've got to have a recording of that. I, I don't, you know, if, if you, if you, I don't know how we're going to arrange it since I don't have access to Ring Radio's recording studio. Well, any. If you can, I'll get him. Neil, you've seen me before. I have where? I painted the place. Which place? Your place. Uh, W-R-N-G. I was with the fat painter. You were? Yeah, you remember me? No. Lucky you. <laughs> oh, i got to have a recording of that. We'll do it. We'll, we'll, everybody bootlegs recordings now. We'll, we'll, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, you people are fantastic. Thank you. I love the one about your face being in contempt of court. <laughs> that is your um, swan song present. Oh, that's, that's great. You 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 uh, highlight of the morning so far. I don't I don't know what we're going to be able to do after you go, Neil. It's just going to be real rough. Well, there's always Wally Kennedy. We're going after Ludlow too. Ah, uh, there's always Wally Kennedy. <laughs> okay. And if his voice ever goes soft on him, I'll be right here to fill in. <laughs> Great. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank uh, you. Be good. Take care, Neil. Oh, those guys are just fantastic. Two six one nine seven six four. Hiya, hiya, hiya. Uh, same to you. Is it true that you are going to uh, law full-time to defend Roscoe Dean and his appeal? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Neil, I hate to steal your thunder. I'm actually going to be an IRS agent. <laughs> Found out my father was an IRS agent in his, not agent, he worked for the IRS for a very short period of time in his youth. It was either that or starve, but I haven't felt the same about him since. But your, your father? Yeah. When I found that out, I didn't know it till recently. Uh, I hate to steal your thunder, but um, I think someone should go ahead and announce your intentions. That uh, anyone that wants to talk, if they get bored with Ring, just call you at your office. Uh, hold your tongue. <laughs> some some people have tried that. <laughs> You know, you and you know how I must react to that. <laughs> Do you have a button? Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Several. Okay, bud. We're going to miss you. Well, I'm going to miss this, too. And, uh, you know, you've had quite a quite an opportunity there. It, not too many people have the opportunity to influence as many people as you have. It's quite a gift. And you're leaving in one piece, I understand. So far. Okay. Come to see us. Okay, thanks a lot. The Iranians haven't found me yet, but they may be waiting out front at uh, 11 o'clock this morning, about the time I walk out of the station. We're going to pause now for the snake lover himself, Ludlow at Large on Ring Radio. In the past few years, it's become popular to tell Polish jokes. Everybody laughs, and it's all great fun. Or we tell jokes about Jews. That's always good for a belly laugh. Or how about the jokes about blacks who either have natural rhythm or love watermelon. Then there are the stories about the Scotsman who is cheap or the Irishman who drinks too much. And let's not forget the Catholic jokes or the jokes about the Baptist preacher. If you're not the butt of the story, almost any joke can be funny. i got to tell you, fun seekers, in all honesty, that I've told more ethnic jokes than most. If a joke is ethnic and funny and not too cruel, not only do I like to tell them, but I like to hear them. I only draw the line on one kind of joke. I don't like to hear jokes about folks that stutter. There must be 10,000 jokes about stutterers, and I'm here to tell you that I've heard them all and never laughed at a one. I never laughed because I remember a little boy with a stutter. I remember how he felt when he couldn't say a word without stuttering and somebody laughed at him. I remember when this little boy stood in line in the varsity and ordered something he didn't want because he couldn't say to all the way dogs without stuttering. I remember the terrible pain he felt in a Presbyterian Sunday school class because he couldn't say the Lord's Prayer without stuttering. And the Sunday school teacher accused him of not knowing it simply because he was too ashamed of his stuttering to try and say it. I remember the agony this little boy grew up with. I should, because his name was Ludlow Porch. Dear God, I hope I remember that pain the next time I'm tempted to tell a Polish joke. I'm Ludlow Porch.
and that's the way I see it. Or there'll be a hot time in the old town tonight. That's <clears throat> some ideas. Who does this weather forecast, uh, Frank, me or Steve? Oh, hey, yeah, something's burning. That's another one. Uh, this, uh, something's burning. Uh, okay. Uh, the Burger Inn, the Woodstock Burger Inn, has a weather forecast for you. Calling for partly sunny and warm, slight chance of a shower, two afternoon high in the mid-80s. Fair to partly cloudy tonight at overnight low of 67 degrees and 74 degrees right now. The opinions expressed over WRNG North Atlanta are not necessarily those of Ring Radio Management or Ring Radio Advertisers. I'm Mark Chatteroy. I'll be with you from 6 a.m. to 10 for the next few mornings. We'll be discussing subjects ranging from Iran and the regime of the Shah to gay life in Atlanta. On Wednesday, we'll cross-examine someone from the Soviet Embassy. Join me, Mark Chatteroy, from 6 to 10 this coming week on 68 Ring Radio. Something's burning. Bob Bailey's TV and Appliances celebrating the Neil Bortz's leaving and now we can get some good advertising on the air week same to you Bartley they have a special sale on General Electric TVs this week at Bob Bailey's TV and Appliances they have I really got even with him the other day I told everybody he had a color TV for less than 20 bucks and he had to had to sell a few of them like that but the real price is a little bit less than 300 usually sells for over 400 Whoa! That's my regular morning stretch. And he also has black and white TVs for $77, usually selling for 130 So you save about, oh, uh, well, let's see, 30 40 about $50 on those things. Bob Bailey's TV and Appliances are lo located two miles outside of Perimeter Highway on Memorial Drive out there near Stone Mountain. Very convenient location, nice store, good people. Lee Bailey uh, is uh, is the boss over there, likes to play racquetball, brand new father, go by and just shoot the bull with him. Think you enjoy it. What you bring me, Bruce? Nose. 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 More nose. Admiral Thomas Hayward, Chief of Naval Operations, has told Pentagon reporters that the all-volunteer military sister, uh, system is slipping into failure, and he supports return of the military draft. That's no big deal. Let's see. Uh, Dr. William Rate, a University of Arizona archaeologist, says he's in the garbage. That's great. Sophia Loren is taking on a new job in the United States in September. Uh promoting Cody Perfume. Uh, she is Italian. Oh, there's some interesting stories. 2619764's number, and you're on ring. Uh, my song is On Top of Old Smoke. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's good. I want to ask you a question, I'll hang up and listen. Whatever happened to the monkey you got well endowed last Christmas? Huh? You're going to have to remind me about that. You got a monkey with a red pair of pants for a Christmas present. Oh, yeah, the hanging monkey. Yes. Yes. Are you the one who brought that by? You are, aren't you, you dirty old lady? I waited till your last day to let you know. Well, you, yeah, I, you know, it took me half of the morning to figure out what you'd done to that monkey. <laughs> this lady brought me a squirrel monkey, a stuffed squirrel monkey at the station, and she took... Uh, and what she did was, uh, this squirrel monkey had a real long tail, you see. And uh, she took off the little squirrel monkey's overalls, put them on backwards, and kind of slipped the tail around the wrong side of him. And it really looked weird, <laughs> to say the least. Well, I'd been thinking about something to make you this year, but, uh, well, I might give it to you. Give what to me? You pass it. You've been promising that for so long. <laughs> well, I'm not going to say, uh, I'm not going to get sentimental, but good luck. Just say AMF. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, AMF. Right, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Two, six, one. <laughs> Lady, what you just said. Nine, seven, six, four. It means adios, my friends. Or adios, my friend. Uh, 74 degrees, and you're on Ring Radio. Two songs, Neil. Okay. Uh, bring in Sinatra to, uh, to sing with the Hey Hira band. When they throw the switch, let him sing, I've got juice under my skin. <laughs> <laughs> and then, how about Ella Fitzgerald right after it's over singing, Old Electric Chair's Got Me. 
Oh, no. Shouldn't have done that on your list. <laughs> we, we need real song titles. Oh, real ones. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I got you, Sunder. My... That's good enough. Okay. 2619764. We're going to go to some news here at Ring Radio. It's almost 8. Take your pills. Back to the phones. You're on Ring Radio. Good morning, Neil. Hey. I uh, wanted to add uh, one final chapter to uh, what we were discussing uh, that Monday morning. Yeah. On the, uh, the hostage raid in Iran. Yeah, oh yeah. I've uh, got another chapter that's a little strange. What's that? From the same underground source. It says that a week before the... Let's say, uh, didn't know what to say, but he dutifully passed it on to the French foreign minister, who uh, thought either the uh, Soviets were uh, trying to see if the French knew anything about it, or uh, just usual Soviet bluff, until after the raid came off, and uh, since then the French foreign ministry don't really m much trust what our State Department does. Mm -hmm. Since it, uh, their um, information seems to be leak out like the places of fear. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think the American people have ever received the truth on the Iranian hostage rescue attempt. We've been lied to on that as sure as I'm leaving Ring Radio. And the one thing about your leaving, uh, you may provide a valuable service to the people in Atlanta by leaving the air. When people get torqued off at you while they're driving to uh, work and uh, take it out on the car ahead of them, maybe you're uh, going uh, to practice law will reduce the traffic rate during morning drive time. Might do it. Good luck. And I'll try to be a service in any way that I can. Okay. Thank you, sir. Take care now. Mm, bye. 261 WRNG Ring Radio. Neil, how much do you think it pays to, you, to be one of those blowers for the telephone company? Uh, they use a machine for that. Uh, Joe Tidwell is the only man that does that, and he just pulls a lever. Lever. Whatever. <laughs> um, He's got a lot of experience in that area, and it's... Uh, yeah, uh, no. Now, uh, give me a break. <laughs> you a turkey? I can't know. No, our phone company work. Well, I, um, I'm really going to miss you. I don't see how I'll ever stay in peg without you to counteract it. You don't have what without me to counteract it? I'll never be able now to listen to peg. I mean, you just cannot listen to 408 DC and row, row, row your boat without having you first to counteract that. <laughs> I mean, if you can't cut them down, I can't listen to them sing. Oh, that's not true. You, will, you, you won't be able to uh, uh, turn it off. You know, we ought to have everybody, all good lows on wackos, kitty litter, everybody down at the station, we all ought to come to your first call, um, come to um, your first court case after you leave ring. Well, if you were going to come to the first one, you're a couple of years too late. I, I know that. I knew you were a practicing lawyer bef um, before now, but I meant after you leave ring, you know. We ought to do something to you. Well, uh, uh, buy me a Mark V. <laughs> We had to buy it and give it to you without wheels. Uh, you take up a collection, a Corvette, white Corvette, white on white. Or or a new van for a balloon chase. Uh, you know, there's lots of things you could do. I mean, I'm my last day here. I might as well go ahead and be greedy. We ought to, put on, we ought to write on your balloon. Uh, uh, I tell you what, uh, take up a collection and get me a videotape, a slap shot. <laughs> yeah, you might that. Oh, yeah. Are you still going to be refereeing hockey? Well, there's no hockey, you dumb turkey. How the hell am I going to do that? <laughs> there's no team here. What am I going to do, put on my NHL jacket and go down to the Omni every uh, uh, two or three times a week during the winter and just sit around and look at the concrete floor? Isn't there amateur hockey? I'm going to play amateur hockey. You know, I couldn't imagine doing anything more boring than philatelism. Than what? Philatelism. You don't have to believe that either. What is that? Philatelism? Stamp collecting. I you, I used to collect stamps. They call them philatelists. You used to be a philatelist. They do. I thought that's what you became after you ate a big bowl of chili. <laughs> um, Close. Yes. Thank you, sir. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. See, when I'm gone, there ain't nobody else going to come on the air and say horrible things like that. Nobody. You're on Ring Radio. Morning, Neil. Yep. What do you say if we got together and got... Donna Summers down there to sing Hot Stuff for Jack. Hot Stuff! Hey! <laughs> hey! Hot Stuff! <laughs> what we're doing, folks, is coming up. We have uh, uh, hired the Hey Hira High School Band 
to uh, hold to, to play outside of the uh, gates of the prison when Jack Potts is electrocuted, and we're trying to come up with uh, the song for them to play. Hot stuff is an excellent suggest suggestion, ma'am. I think that would be great if she if she could do it with all of her stage effects and everything. Have the whole thing. That's that's a good one. <laughs> good luck to you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Some of the other song suggestions have been You Light Up My Life, Smoke Gets In Your Eyes, Hot Time in the Old Town Tonight, Something's Burning on Top of Old Smokey, and Hot Stuff. And uh, uh, I've got juice under my skin. Uh, excellent, excellent suggestions, and hello there. I'm sitting here in the office. I thought I'd never get on. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing fine. Good. I've got two possibilities, and then afterward i got something to toss to you. How about I was going to get James Brown to sing Hot Pants? Is there a song of Hot Pants? Yeah, yeah, there's one. It's How about Black Shorts? Yeah, there you go. Uh-huh. And there's Cherish Me. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. Listen, if you can have time on your hands now, you've got to get that railroad started. You've got one single box car. At least you could do a stop by and see what I got and oh, get you started. Yeah, I, I got a big basement, too, that I could put that sucker in. Man, I'd love to bring my partner over and we could get you started. It'd be, you'd have a riot. Well, I have enough hobbies going right now, and I'm going to have less time for them than I ever did. Yeah. But well, just, just fly, fly around in the balloon. It, that would be nice. I, I still have a chase vehicle if you're interested. Enjoyed your wife's visit early the other morning. Did you? Yeah. Well, I didn't. Okay. Listen, has my partner called from Syracuse yet? Uh, no. He's hey, trying. we got one second. Talk to you later. I'd hop in the car and go to Barton Springs just, i uh, drive 100 miles just to go to Barton Springs and go swimming. Yeah, well, it was worth it. I don't imagine it's as nice anymore, but anyway, I was... Uh, going to say, when I was in my 20s, I decided that all Democrats were either ignorant or unpatriotic. Now that I'm older, I know that all Democrats are either ignorant or unpatriotic or power mad. Or stupid. Well, it, that comes under ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. But that there are possibly five Democrats that are different. Name two. Well, uh, I can think immediately of Congressman Larry McDonald, and, uh, well, the others escaped me. Anyway, do you remember the picture that you have of Carter in his birthday suit? I wish... Oh, I yes, I've got it. I've still got it right here. Oh, good. I wish you could do something good with it. Uh, it's, it's not a picture of Carter in his in his birthday suit. Oh, it's not? No, it is Carter uh, standing up uh, when he had been swirling around in the mud and uh, there was a, a uh, error, a problem with his trousers when he stood up and uh, uh, the result was a very candid shot that revealed more than it should have. Oh, well. Here it is, right? Bruce, have you ever seen my Carter picture, Bruce? Where's the weather? Oh, who cares about the weather? See that? Look at look at that. Oh, compared to... Uh, Bruce is looking at it right now. Describe what you... S <laughs> Describe what you see in that picture. <clears throat> guy's got a problem. <laughs> no, that's why he won the election. Too many women saw that picture. Mm, why didn't I see it? I, I've never seen... I've never run into anybody else with a copy of it. Where did you get it? I got it out of the Gwinnett Daily News, Sunday, August 22nd, 1976, page 14. Oh! We didn't live here then. Uh, well, they they didn't. <laughs> they recalled that paper that day, is my understanding. Beg your pardon? They recalled the paper that day. Oh, they did? Yeah. Oh, that doesn't give me much chance. I was going to call them up and ask them to run the by again. What, what was the date again? August 22nd, 1976. Uh-huh. Yeah. Did. I'll have to call and ask them. Okay. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Exactly. It's been a pleasure working with you, Neil. It really has. Bruce, what are but you I, in here I, rummaging around on this table looking for? I wish you'd find the weather. What do you need it for? So the next man that comes in will have it. Type up another one for the next man that comes in. Traffic time. I am almost past caring. <laughs> oh, really? I'm an hour and 22 minutes away from <laughs> past caring. National Lampoon. This was the news story that I read that gave me the idea for that program. It says, San Diego scientists are alarmed over the weekend attack and takeover of a tuna boat by a band of dolphins. 
from the hospital bed where he is recovering from fin lacerations. A lone survivor of the attack described to reporters what had happened. He said we were pulling in the tuna nets when all of a sudden these dolphins leap out of the water and begin slapping us with their fins and poking us with their noses. After they killed everybody but the captain and me, they made Bill, Captain William Harvey, jump through a hoop. The dolphins freed the tuna catch and sailed the boat to San Diego where they beached it and fled. We may be on the verge of total war with these very intelligent animals, Dr. Oscar Trench, director of the Marine Study for the U.S. Navy, told reporters. In a related story, the Navy is investigating reports that a group of dolphins have salvaged a sunken Russian submarine equipped with nuclear warheads. Oh, we had fun with that one. Hello. Uh, I've never wanted I haven't heard mentioned this morning. I'll be glad when you did, you rescued you. Well, oh yeah, that was one of the first. Is there really a song title like that? Yeah, it's a... Uh, I didn't know there was a Where's my list? I'm looking for my list now, and I can't find it. But I'll be glad when you're dead, you rascal you. Thank you, sir. Looking for song titles for Jack Jack Park's execution theme song. Hello. Uh, Neil? Yeah. I sure hate to hear that you're going. We, we're going to be very uh, lonesome when you're not hearing you. Ma'am, they're not going to they're not going to sign the station off the air in the morning. Big pardon? They're not going to... Uh, Sign the station off here in the morning. Where are you going? Why? Why are you? Where are you going? Oh, I'm I'm going to spend full time with my law practice. Well, bless your heart. We'll miss you. We hope that we will. You will be back on sometime. Well, uh, that's up to the station. But I wouldn't mind sitting in for people. You know, like maybe somebody's gone for a vacation for a week. I wouldn't mind coming and sitting in. Well, you are a saint, and we enjoy you, and good luck to you. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You're on Ring Radio. Now, what uh, the lady was just talking about is a very serious matter. I speak from 20 years of professional experience in this. I just wonder if anyone has pointed out to you that you're about to subject yourself to two very serious maladies of old broadcasters. The first is yeah. microphone withdrawal, and the second is megacycle deficiency. What are you going to do about that? I don't know. I've had a lot of people uh, seriously question whether I can stand not doing this. <laughs> but I think the an the answer is yes. Uh, you know, I am I am abs I am in love with the law. I've wanted to be a lawyer ever since I was in high school. It's and uh, I get a great deal of personal satisfaction and pleasure out of it, but uh, I have come to realize during the last couple of uh, last couple of months that because of the time demands, it's getting harder and harder to adequately service the needs of the clients, so it's time to pull out. Well, it makes a long day, too. Yes, it does. Huh. Very long. Do you uh, do you practice in uh, courtrooms that generally have microphone assistance? No. I don't need it. <laughs> Have you noticed how many former broadcasters wind up in the ministry with a little microphone in front of them? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the, I, the amazing thing is how many former broadcasters there are. Oh, indeed. Usually for economic reasons. That's right, because uh, bluntly speaking, uh, this business does not pay a lot of money. No, it's, it's either for ego satisfaction or just love of the medium or or having something to say or maybe not having something to say and thinking you do. And another big drive with me is, and I think this is a big drive with a lot of people, is that uh, the the intense desire I have to, to work for myself, you know. Well. So, like this vacation that I'm going on this week, you know, my, my last day with Ring Radio is the end of the month, and I've got a, a paid vacation coming up. This will be the last paid vacation I'll ever have in my life. Well, working for yourself is, I think, the uh, the highest order of all. I think uh, I've, I've done it myself for 12 years, and I'd make a terrible employee for someone else. Well, I, I, Once you I do make a terrible employee. <laughs> well, you've been one for a long time, fella. A terrible employee? Around there, yeah. Yeah, I think that's probably true. I've caused more headaches than, uh, than pleasure to a lot of people here. <laughs> No, you've given a lot of pleasure to a lot of folks, and I've been one of them. But I will tell you out of my own experience that about every five years, uh, somehow I find myself back in front of a microphone and getting paid for it. And uh, I hope it won't be five years before we hear you again. Well, you'll you'll hear me around. Well, that's good. Okay. Good luck to you. Bye-bye. Uh, you know, I wouldn't mind. 
coming on every once in a while, as I've said before. 77 degrees at 2619764. Bring up the bongos. There they are. It's time for Larry Munson, GN Sports on Ring Radio. Hello. Hello. Yes, uh, I just this is Ross Britton. I just thought I'd call up and. Uh, Hi, Ross. Where's Wilson? Uh, he's uh, he's taking his four kids down to uh, his ex-wife. <laughs> Who can blame him? Well, after all, <laughs> I uh, where did you get Steve Thompson? He sounds like a Piedmont Park refugee. He uh. <laughs> well, he just. Very good at knowing which way the wind blows. From top ten, huh? Yes. I guess I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> I don't either. Listen, I wanted to uh, congratulate you on finally getting a decent job. Ah, uh, it's it's hard to escape this broadcasting triangle when you get into it, you know. It is. Uh, I know that you and Ross have been looking for uh, quite a while. No, me and uh, Wilson. I mean, you and Wilson. Right. Yes. Uh, by the way, how is the bartending school coming? <laughs> I, I, I know you people must be thrilled. Well, never one to mince words. I thought I'd stick in a cheap plug for all your listeners to come over and listen to a decent radio show for a change. Oh, really? <laughs> I, 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 know, uh, I know that you all are thrilled. It does, it does drastically reduce the level of competition morning drive in this town. And, and, but Ring is going to be working very hard to, uh, to find somebody better than me, and they shouldn't have any difficulty in doing that, after all. You've got to be kidding. Who are they going to put on? Wally Kennedy? Mr. Milkatoast? <laughs> no. No, uh, they, they, they want a person that'll wake up. <laughs> well, that's really for sure. <laughs> no, they, they've got uh, a, guy, a guy named Chat Away coming on next week. Who? Chat Away. His last name is Chat Away. Where's he from? Dirt, South Dakota? London, England. Oh, how delightful. Yeah, he's got an English accent and a whole bit. I'm flattered you called, Ross. Really? Yeah. That's a first. I suppose so. <laughs> Boy, it must be easy to just play a record and shoot the bull with your friends on the telephone like this. Well, frankly, I have to do the news this morning, too, since our news director is out. Oh, that's right. He's uh, on the make, too. Yes, I... Well, <laughs> never. <laughs> He's probably, probably doing another job interview at some place like uh, Los Angeles. Probably is. It's never tell about people in the broadcast. No, you can't. We lie a lot. Well, listen, uh, get, get, my, uh, get my brief in the mail and uh, have, a, have a delightful career as a lawyer. <laughs> Thank you, Ross. <laughs> Appreciate your call. All right. Okay, bye-bye. That's Ross Britton, and, of course, they listen to the Neil Bort Show while they're playing records for their listeners. 77 degrees at 68 Ring Radio. Hello? Yes. Neil, I've never called you before, but I sure have enjoyed you. Enjoyed you. And you always talk about things and always seem to write, write about them. And I sure do hate to see you go, but I sure do wish you good luck. Well, thank you. That's very kind. <laughs> How come you haven't called before? I guess I'm too scared. I don't know. But you see how easy it really is? It's really easy, isn't it? I know. Nothing to be afraid of, is there? No, not a thing. No. Well, I sure do wish you good luck. Oh, thank you, ma'am. You be calling back the other people on the air here now. Well, there won't be Neil. Well, who knows who they'll get in here to replace me. Well, uh, you about as good as they okay it. I used to listen to Ben Bolton a whole lot. I saw Ben two weeks ago. He stayed with us for a couple of nights. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's doing fine. Well, good. Okay. Thank you, Locke, for your kind comments. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 261-WRNG. You're next. Oh, Neil, I'm one of Ludlow's flackles. <laughs> uh, El Bando the Magnificent. And oh, who the Magnificent? Right. I've seen you a few times, and I want to congratulate you on your departure and wish you uh, God's blessings as you go into the law practice. Uh, uh, you mean go into it full time? Full since, time, right. Yeah, since I've been... uh, I often have need of a lawyer due to my new career as a... You're a drunk now, aren't you? You're a drunk now. No, I'm not a drunk. I don't drink. <laughs> I sound like I'm drunk. It makes me money that way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I never knew what I was, but seriously, you crystallized my thinking. I knew I wasn't a Democrat, and I knew I wasn't a Republican, and I didn't like the connotations of an independent, but uh, I really liked the libertarian philosophy. Yeah, that's. I think that's where a lot of us are, but we just don't really realize it. And, uh, shy and bashward, and being conservatives, we don't come out of our shell like we should. 
Thank you for your call, sir. I've only got a few seconds here. Uh, have a wonderful time. Thank you, sir. Be good. 8.57 at WRNG. Bruce Bartley now is going to bring us the news, and we'll be back to talk about the law of the land, the evolution of our legal system by Charles Wimbar, our guest. There's certain fundamental rights that have to be recognized, even if you're a, uh, a very tiny minority. Uh, that Those are in our Bill of Rights. Um, you, you're entitled to speak your mind freely, even though most of the people in the country think that what you're saying is nonsense or, or even dangerous. Uh, that's our First Amendment. That's essentially what it is. But we have a lot of people that want to keep, pe uh, that would be very willing to see our law prevent the uh, expression of some of these unpopular opinions. Well, you know, that's, that's right. We're dealing with an abstraction when we talk about the First Amendment. Uh, for most people, freedom of speech means freedom for me. You know, I, I want to say what I want to say, but if you want to say something that I regard as obnoxious, I want you to shut up. Uh, the rule of law that enters, and this is characteristic of our law, is that you can't just consider yourself. You have to uh, live your life according to certain principles that are good for society at large. Uh -huh. uh, then at the other end, the other end of the thing, we were talking about rule by majority, uh, we have what the, the kind of rule that existed through most of human history, where one person or a small group of people tell everybody else how to live. I just heard on the news, your news about uh, trouble in South Africa. Uh-huh. Uh, there you have a situation where a minority is exercising power over a majority. Uh, it's very, you know, this book, uh, The Law of the Land, uh, attempts to explain our legal system by going into its history, and I think it's, that's the only way you can really understand it. Okay, uh... Mr. Rembar, we have to take a short pause here. Messages for our listeners. We'll be right back with you. Charles Rembar, our guest, The Law of the Land. The book is The Law of the Land. Mr. Rembar, for the average layperson, your book, by the way, published by Simon & Schuster. Uh, uh, quite a treatment uh, of the subject. Why would the average layperson, as an attorney, I was fascinated with it, but why would the average layperson want to pick up your book and read it, and what are they really going to get out of it? Well, let me answer that in a minute. Uh, I'd like to finish the thought we were discussing. Sure, okay. Uh, when, when we paused. Uh, you look back uh, six, eight hundred years in our law, and what you had was something very similar to the situation in South Africa. There was a small group of people, the king and, and the big barons, who were uh, running a country the way they wanted to run it. Mm -hmm. And four-fifths of the people were serfs, had almost no rights, virtually no rights, very close to slaves. Uh, what changed that situation was the idea of law, that you have to have principles uh, that are more important than the most important man in the country. And the history of our law is the gradual acceptance of that notion. Uh, and, and it's very important. Now, uh, now to get to your, your question, why would uh, the average person want to pick this up? Well, you know, I wrote it for the average person. Okay. Uh, I, I tried, this can be a very heavy subject. Uh, I tried to uh, lighten it some. People uh, have told me that, that uh, I was successful in that, that the book is, is entertaining. Uh, as well as instructive. Well, it certainly has been to me. Let me say that. Uh, now, uh, aiming it at the average person uh, means that I feel that we really have to understand this uh, framework. It's a framework in which we live. It affects every single thing we do. Uh, we, we drive on the right side of the road. Why? because there's a law that says so, and if there wasn't, there'd be great confusion and lots of accidents. Uh, we 
act according to the law most of the time. Most of us, most of the time, act according to the law because it's an ingrained habit. But uh, sometimes we are confused about exactly what the law requires. And I think we ought to know more about it. You know, it, it isn't that difficult. It's really not that hard. Uh, people have the idea, uh, and I'm afraid uh, some members of our profession uh, enhance it, that there's something very mysterious, arcane about the law. There isn't. Uh, if, if, if you sit down and, and listen to what it's all about, you'll find that it's pretty sensible. You know, a lot of people have a... Sometimes you even get the opinion that it's a majority, but a lot of people have uh, a bit of animosity toward or distrust for uh, people who practice the law, the practitioners of the law, attorneys. Uh, many times, in, in my opinion, this is not because of the person, uh, it's himself or herself, the attorney, but because of the layman's disgust with or confusion with our, our legal system. Do you think that if somebody went through your, your book, looked at it, studied the history a little bit, that they might more fully understand the role that attorneys play in it and may approach them from a different viewpoint? Well, I, I certainly hope so, and, and uh, that was my, my goal in writing it. Uh, I do think lawyers uh, are, are at fault to some extent. Uh -huh. There's, uh, they should really tell their clients uh, what it's all about. It's not too hard to explain. And a lot of things that people think of as technicalities aren't really technicalities. There are things that are necessary to make the system work. And there's one other point that people really should realize. Uh, we have to have rules of law. If we didn't have some general statements, uh, nobody would know uh, where, where he stood. Uh, you have to be able to uh, guide your business and your life in general according to, to certain rules. Now, a rule is something, by definition, that applies to a great many particular instances, and it's not always going to work. Once you drag in a number of situations, uh, the rule is going to work badly in some of them. But we can't avoid that. Uh, and, Nothing, uh, yeah, nobody's perfect after all. Nobody's perfect. No, no principle's perfect. No institution is perfect. The law isn't perfect. Uh, the institution of, say, the family, which is very valuable to us, isn't perfect. We frequently see that it doesn't work well. Uh, another institution, education, often doesn't work well. But we need these institutions. We, we have to uh, live within a certain structure or else we have no civilization at all. Okay, Mr. Rembar, we're almost about 40 seconds away from uh, uh, from our break right here, and the book, and I've read most of it, and I'm going to take the rest of it with me on a vacation this afternoon. I'm going to read it over the uh, rest of the week. It gives me a lot of understandings that I didn't have, and I'm sure that it would do the same for the people. Congratulations on taking a rather difficult topic and putting it into enjoyable and easy reading, for, uh, reading form the way you have. Thank you. And it's uh, a great treatment of the subject. It's called The Law of the Land, The Evolution of Our Legal System by Charles Rembar, practicing attorney. Where is he? Frank, Los Angeles? And New York. One of them. New York lawyers. And it's an interesting book for those of you that want a better understanding of the system that you, if you want to live here, must live under. 78 degrees. We're going to take a break right now. When we come back, let's just open them up and finish out this last 40 minutes so that I can, uh, so I can say goodbye and get out of here. Be good. We'll be back. Speak to me. Well, well, well. Well, 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 yourself. <laughs> Neil, I think you're making a mistake. Is this Hosey? Yep. Hey, Hosey Will Hosea Williams. That's right. How you doing? Uh, I'd just like to say that you certainly has become a, in radio a legend during your time. 
and uh, you provoking people into thinking, uh, provoking people at least to concern themselves, uh, um, I'm sure has made a great contribution to the betterment of this city, and I just don't see how you're going to bog yourself up in a law office, making money, getting rich. Filthy lucre. Um, being absorbed by the bureaucracy when you've been such a provocateur. I really hate to see you go. Oh, Hosea, that's nice. But, uh, you know, it's it, it's time to move on, and uh, law practice has been my uh, my goal for many, many years, and I'm not going to be absorbed by any bureaucracy. I want to congratulate you on your new uh, TV series. Well... I hope it doesn't do to you what the chemistry lab did to me yeah. to finally break out of it. Now, nah, come on, Hosea. No kidding. I was in the Now, you, Hosea, you don't sound like you're in a good mood today. Huh? You don't sound like you're in a good mood today. I'm kind of remorseful. Somebody told me that today was near boy's last day was almost telling me that the ladder should be closed down. Oh, come on, Hosea. That's too much. I'm sure there are millions of people. It have to be millions because there's millions, a couple of million in Atlanta. But I just wanted to say that uh, you have been a, a, a moving spirit in the city, and uh, I hope Rain will certainly get somebody else that is able to prick people, uh, stimulate them, uh, get them to least thinking, because I think much of the problems that we face today is because people just take everything for granted and nothing can be done about it, and let Joe do it, and I'm really sorry to see you leave ring, but I do hope you... Um, well, you and I have had some conversations in the last year off the air, and you knew darn well I was going to do this. Well, I figured sooner or later, you know, you have a great calling, and you love law, you study hard, you're going the right. But I just want to say that I certainly hope that um, you would be as successful in law. It's pretty hard to leave the top of the heat. You certainly can't go in as one of the great lawyers of the city, but you are truly one of the greatest radio personalities uh, in this country. So you're going from the top of the heat to start all over again, and I just uh, wish you as much, much success in your law practice as you have uh, made and had in uh, your radio career. Hosea, that is nice. I, I'll remember this conversation always. I will remember this... Uh, as well as I remember that uh, lovely day that I pushed that white pie into your face. <laughs> I, I, I really wanted to come out this morning to push a pie in your face, but I really thought that um, that was uh, not the best thing to do, even though it would be very acceptable by you. But really, Neil, um, I wish you well, you and your family. I certainly wish you a great career. Well, if you're ever out in Decatur, just stop in the office, okay? Thank you, my friend. Okay, Jose. Yes. Hey, bye-bye. Uh, some of you that haven't been able to or gotten to know Hosea Williams the way I have have missed a treat indeed. He is a unique person. And he's a sincere one, really. And I appreciate the kind things that he just got through saying. 26 minutes after 9 o'clock, 68 Ring Radio. Well, I just want to tell you this, that I've been enjoyed your program throughout the years that I've heard you. I agree with you on your politics. I hope you vote for Bregan, and I hope you'll keep up with your country music what time you're on your vacation. I hope you'll get up to Nashville. I'd like to go to Nashville. Lori, my little, my daughter went to Nashville two weeks ago. She went to Opryland and all that. I'd like to go up there and see some of that. Well, that's fine country up there, and you'll be more than welcome with all the artists I know that. Well... So, I'm, uh, a lot of them know you up there. One of my great passions is traveling, and, and during the last years, of course, because of the time demands of working in broadcasting, uh, you know, ra uh, with rating periods, and uh, it's not something you can just say, well, I'm going to take off this week and go somewhere. Well, now I'm going to have that opportunity. I have already made, you know what I've already made arrangements to do? No. Next summer... Next summer, I have already booked myself to take a seven-day trip through the Grand Canyon on the Colorado River. That'll be a swell trip. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Well, Neil, good luck to you. Thank you very much, sir. I do appreciate it. 
later on this summer, going to take the train to uh, and, and go visit Washington, uh, New York, and Boston. Going to take Lori on a sort of an educational trip, try, try to show her a little history, especially in in uh, Washington and in and in Boston. I've never been to Boston. Never been there. I want to go up there and laugh at those people that continue to like the likes of Ted Kennedy to public office. Ring radio. I, I think you will be one of the top attorneys of the United States one day. Not me. We will miss you. And I've enjoyed you so much. Well, that's kind. And I, uh, I doubt that what you say is true. I'm getting kind of a late start on that. No, I think you will one day be one of the top attorneys of the United States. You're brilliant, and you uh, have been so nice on radio. Nice? Yes. <laughs> are, are you nice? Well, you disagree with people, but that is natural. Some people would say that I have been crude and uncouth. Oh, no, you have not. You don't think so? No, no, I've enjoyed it. Goodbye. Okay, bye-bye. Uh, let's see, 29 minutes after the hour, and you're next. Okay, I'm kind of nervous, but I'll try to... Why are you nervous? You haven't done this before? Yeah, but it's been a long time ago. Okay, I wanted to tell you, uh, this is going to sound corny, and a lot of people don't believe it like what just happened, but you know what you are? Uh. Yeah, well, well, go ahead, just say what. <laughs> you are nice. Now, a lot of people may not have blame that, but they've listened to you over the over the years. That you really are a nice person. Me? Yeah. Uh, what do you have for breakfast this morning? I had blueberry muffins and fresh fruit. And well, I know what the problem is then. Your blueberries well, fermented. <laughs> no. Yeah, they did. No, no, really. I, I I know I'm embarrassing you, but you really are nice, and I know that you don't. Well, anyway, you are. And one time you helped me. I know you don't recognize my voice, but you did help me one time. Well, do you have a flat or something? No, uh, you, it was a lot more serious than that. Oh. You gave me some advice off the air, and um, not advice, but uh, I was in a very, very low period, and you helped me. Well, that's, I'm glad I was able to help. But uh, also, hold on, oh, uh, let me tell you some of the, your, your good points. Um, oh, don't do that. You're going to get me all embarrassed and everything, and the last thing I want to do is get emotional during this half, you know. Let me tell you, you're... I, wa I want to finish up this half hour and walk out of here and, and you know... No, i got to say this. You are good at articulating what a lot of people feel, but they don't, they're not good at articulating. And see, that's one reason you're going to be a good lawyer, because you can articulate. And that's valuable, and you are uh, excellent in that. I started doing that when I was young, which is, of course, what happened to my eyesight while I wear glasses now. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, anyway, you are nice. Now, I, now, don't get me wrong. I haven't agreed with a lot of things you've done, but see, you get people thinking, and see, sometimes the things I disagree with you on, I even feel more strongly about because... You made me think it through. Well, I, that's all I have ever tried to do on Ring Radio, and I wanted to get this across this morning, is that, uh, is is just to try to get people to just think. Yeah. And if people will just think and not parrot what other people have said, I think the, the whole country would be so much better off for it. You know, and one another thing that you, a service you've performed is I didn't know Jose... Hosea has some very likable points. Oh, sure. I, I'm crazy about Hosea Williams. I like him. Well, I do, too. But I used to not like him, you know. But uh, from hearing him on, talk with you, the boy, he has a lot on the ball. I wish his politics were right. I wish he had the right attitude of, of uh, every man responsible for his own actions. Well, he does. Well, you know, but he has too many social programs ideas. Well, less than you'd think. Really? In other words, is he is he is he kind of showbiz? Ah, uh, I think maybe he's got a little showbiz in him, but he's also he's also very aware of the importance of the human uh, the human mind and training your mind to produce what you want out of life instead right. of depending upon others to give it to you. Yeah, I, well, I wish he would make that clearer. I don't think he I don't think that is clear, especially with a lot of blacks. I see. I think blacks are enslaved to government just as much as they were enslaved during, uh, you know, in the 1800s. Well, that's true. I think there's a lot of truth in that. And uh, I think he could do a lot to help them. Yeah. Since he's, and you know, he is a spokesman, quote, unquote. But anyway, um, I've, I've enjoyed it. Hey, you will be on uh, like for 
filling in and this and that and the other. Ma'am, I don't know. I can't just call up and say, hey, I'll fill in, you know. If well, they if they ever call me and I can fit it into my schedule, uh, I'll do it. Views you have. And there's two things I hope that that I never have to do. One is I hope I never need a lawyer need of your new service. <laughs> and number two, all those people who are really happy today that you're leaving the station and are glad that your voice will not be on there anymore. I hope I never have the opportunity of hearing them say, well, you know, that guy was right years back. We should have listened to, listened to him. Because I'm afraid that the way things are going, many of them, they won't remember your name, but they'll remember the fact that you remember that guy on Ring Radio? He said all this was going to happen, and it's here, and we got problems. But, you know, best of luck to you. Well, thank you. I hope that I don't have the opportunity to ever say I told you so either. Thank you. Okay. By the way, I mentioned uh, somebody called up and said, what do you mean, Hosea Williams' new TV show? Uh, Hosea Williams is coming on uh, tomorrow night, I believe. It's called Dude on a Hot Tin Roof. Hosea Williams stars as a retired tap dancer who opens an aluminum siding business in Atapulgas, Georgia. And uh, that'll be on TV tomorrow night. Okay, <laughs> you missed out on that. It's kind of a take off on du dudes or uh, dukes of hazard or whatever it is ring radio good morning yep the adversary hello 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 hey i'm not gonna say goodbye i'm gonna say good luck and god bless you because uh, the other people have already said pretty much what i would like to say but uh neil i've met you in person a few times you probably don't remember but uh, i've got the highest appreciation on what you said and i feel like you're sort of the johnny appleseed of uh what can be accomplished with either caustic wit, good humor, or a good challenge to people uh, to make them think. And I really appreciate that. And as a token of my appreciation, I'm going to send you a letter, uh, a combination of things that have to do with what's going on today. And I'll publish some things, and I want you to have it so you can read it, a challenge. And I do hope that's fallen. And uh, I just wanted to tell you that I thoroughly appreciate it. And uh, the thoughts that have been inspired in me that I've passed on to other people in print and otherwise and on the radio, and uh, I really appreciate that. Well, look forward to getting your work. You shall. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Uh, 9.35. Hi. Your mic's open. There's somebody hey, walking. How you doing? It's the first time I had a chance to meet you. I'm Derek That's right. I never have met you before. Yeah, I'm the one with the balloons, you know what I mean? No. I got the red, white, and blue balloon, you know, and I've been flying it around town and everything. I just wanted to come by the station and say goodbye to you. That's Who let all. this turkey in here? You don't want me to say goodbye to you? Oh, I, I think that's I think that's very nice. I've never seen your face before. I don't know Where what you're talking about. Where'd I've you seen you in your balloon a lot of time. Last time it was pressed against the equitable building. Yeah, oh, that was a rough flight. Bad run. Oh, Ran bad right run. into it and just slid right down. Right landed down, on Peachtree yeah. Street. Right bad the so there, Neil. Yeah. And, and we had 13 balloons out of Snellville last week. Where were you? Didn't see you out there. 13's a bad number. I don't go up in a balloon with 13 people and nobody. No, it's not 13 people. It's 13 balloons. Oh, 13 balloons? Yeah. I understand now. The third one, the 13th one to take off, landed in a meadow muffin. A meadow muffin. Are Is you that here like a corn chip? No, that's like a cow flop. Are you here to apply for my job? Yeah, I thought I would because I want to get into broadcasting. You know, I, I am very good at elocutions, and my vocabulary is very good, and I went to Harvard Law School. Hey. I think I have the qualifications. I think you, that's, that's, that's all it takes. I'm going to wait for Mr. Davey and see if he will interview me. He's not in town. Oh, good. Then maybe I can wait for another day. Yeah, you. Yeah, and the program director's not in town. Well, how am I going to appeal for the job? Uh, there's nobody here you can apply to. Oh, I do want to get in broadcasting. Though, I don't you know. blame you. It's a good, good profession. Uh, baseball, I mean, broadcasting has been very good to me. Well, goodbye, Neil. I got to go out and clean up the place. Bye, Dork. Derek. Sorry. <laughs> I, I have trouble with names. Bye, Derek. Bye now, Neil. Bye now. Two six one nine seven six four is our number to WRNG, and hello there. I call to say that I'm glad that you're leaving because now I'll get sleep in the morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> great. I I would rather just let that pass. 
and uh, not try to comment on that, because anything I say is going to get me in, in trouble. There's nothing I've seen in that. I... No, it's been a pleasure getting up with you in the morning. <laughs> Whatever. And Yeah, right. And uh, be good. Well, now you have a good life. Oh, I will. <laughs> I will. What's okay. left of it. <laughs> right. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Get out here and open up a broadcasting school somewhere. Hello. Good morning, Neil. Yeah. I'm certainly glad to see that you are going into a business when you leave uh, the job that you hold right now. That means that you're not going on welfare. And I certainly am glad that there's somebody that's leaving in one job going to another that doesn't go on welfare. Well, the idea occurred to me. After all, I've been paying into it for so long, I thought that it might be time for me to, to get a little. That's right. That's right. But I, as you know, as much as you said, these poor old businessmen have to pay a whole uh, a lot of money for these people on welfare. And I guess you're going to start paying some of this extra money for welfare that uh, us poor businessmen have been paying for a long time. Well, I have been paying quite enough, thank you. <laughs> well, I just want to wish you good luck and uh, try to stay off of it, will you? I'll try. <laughs> bye bye. Goodbye. I'll probably have to keep paying on to it though. Fifteen until ten. Eulogy or something. <clears throat> yeah, it's kind of getting kind of depressing, isn't it? A little bit. I I, I hope to lighten it up maybe. I'll listen to you. You're gonna have to speak up a bit. Okay, I'll listen to you. I guess for the last ten years or so, and I was really pleased when you came on, and really pleased when you came back. Um. And I, I guess I'd like to say how much I'm going to miss you. But, of course, I guess I would be lying. Uh, <laughs> over the last... See, uh, you said something yesterday that uh, really changed my opinion of you. Uh, oh, good. I'm glad I managed to do that before I left. And that was in regards to, I guess, uh, your uh, most of your attention going into your law practice now instead of uh, just... Uh, uh, disconnected conversations in the morning. And like the other guy, I'm not going to say goodbye. Uh, I'm not sure whether goodbye is synonymous with good riddance, but I'll take it. I hope you take it in the way it's meant. Oh, I've always taken you in the way you were meant. Okay, okay, now. Good luck. Okay. Bye-bye. I'm throw away all my notes here, I guess. Not going to need them anymore. Hello. Hello, Neil. Yeah. Hi, I'm a first-time caller. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You sure waited your time, didn't you? You're right. Uh, it's been a long... Uh, I've been listening to you, I guess, for about five years. But I just want you to know that I have enjoyed you very much. I think you're a very inspirational person. And I wish you an awful lot of luck in whatever you do. And, of course, if I ever needed a lawyer, you know, I'd love to come to somebody who's not going to give me a bunch of bull. <laughs> well, I've been delivering that over the air for so long, I'd probably run out. How about that? Well, you take care now. Thank you, ma'am. Bye-bye. We're still looking for songs for the Hey Hira High School marching band to play as they stand outside of Reedsville Prison on July 1st to uh, entertain the crowd that will be gathered for the execution of Jackie Potts. And we've had some nominations for songs this morning, including Smoke It's In Your Eyes, uh, Hot Stuff, uh, Something's Burning, and uh, various, you know, you, you, you can chime in on that. We don't want this to all be goodbyes for the next 13 or so minutes. 68 ring. Hello. 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 Could you please tell me why my green tomatoes get brown spots on them? Gummy root blight. What can alleviate the condition? Penicillin. Penicillin? Yes. How can you apply that? You grind it up, you get some penicillin pills, and dissolve them in liquid Vigoro, and spray it on your plants, and the penicillin is what you need to get rid of gummy root blight. And spray, dissolve, and spray? Yeah, yeah you got it. You go to your doctor and say, I, what is it, tomatoes, little cherry tomatoes, right? No, bigger ones. A big ones? Mm hmm Yeah, I just tell them that your, your, your tomatoes... Say, Doctor, my tomatoes have gummy root blight. <laughs> and uh, he will know immediately that he needs to prescribe penicillin. Probably he'll want to squeeze the tomatoes first and see just how gummy or blighty they are. He will prescribe the penicillin, then you dissolve it in a solution of liquid Vigoro and spray it on your tomatoes. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Bye-bye. It'll sting a little, but you'll be able to stand it. 68 Ring Radio. Wow.
Hi, um, I just wanted to say that I'm going to miss you very much, and I hope that I hope you wish you all the success in your law career. Well, that's very kind. Thank you so much. Uh huh. And I hope you'll be listening to whoever it is they bring in here to do this show. Hello. Good morning. Yeah. Neil. <laughs> yeah. Why? Well, I've always enjoyed your up tent up tempo intellectual sense of humor. Well, that's mighty white of you to say that. Yeah. <laughs> First time I dialed past ring, I heard some of your name conversation between you and somebody else. I said, "What are these fools talking about?" And I've been listening to you ever since. But uh, my main uh, compliment uh, regarding your contribution to this uh, overall conversational uh, conversational thing on ring is that you kept me from doing what I hear a lot of people doing on ring and that's exercise and they divine right to call up and make a fool out of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> really, you should do a little thinking before you dial 2619764 and then you might make a contribution to somebody's day. Well, that's that's a good thought. Some people don't, but some of the times the ones that don't think end up to be the most entertaining. Yeah, they're very entertaining. Uh, I'm telling you, it, wh why did you throw that curve at that lady on those tomatoes? Was that a setup call or what? No. That was a serious call. Oh, yeah, I think she was serious. <laughs> okay, good luck. I hope I see you at the Leonard Duran fight tonight. Uh, I'm going to be out of town. T hey, how'd you like that Mavis uh, Foster, or whatever his name is? Crazy. He did not last but 16 seconds. That's incredible. If somebody had told me that Joe Frazier's son couldn't take a punch, I'd have laughed him all the way back to Philadelphia. Well, they asked him, said, what I'm saying, he hit me upside the head. <laughs> <laughs> That's usually what happens. I, there, aren't, there ain't too many body shots to take people down, even though I've seen some good ones. Oh, boy, 16 seconds, and it took him five minutes to pry his, his form up off the canvas. Good grief. Boy, that was over in a hurry. I can imagine. 2619764 is our number at WRNG, and you're on the air. I think I have a good song for Potts. Which one is that? I'm heading for the last roundup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I, I'm i going to call up that morning because I may be back in town well, by then. Sorry what's happening to him. Huh? He took somebody's life, and I think an eye for an eye. Definitely. I, absolutely. And before I leave, I again want to remind everybody that at the scheduled time for Jack Potts' execution, Turn off all your lights, toasters, and appliances. We want every available watt and ohm uh, and amp to be uh, pumped down to Reedsville. That's a good idea. Good luck, Neil. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. Good morning, Neil. Yes, it is, isn't it? It certainly is. I just wanted you to know I've been listening to you since I was an idealistic college liberal to becoming a tax-paying libertarian. I, I used to be an idealistic college liberal. Oh, so did I. Ten years ago, I was listening to you, and you used to make me so mad I could strangle you. And sometimes I still get that way, but I just wanted to know you've been a big influence on my life with all your positive thinking, going through the silver school and all this stuff. And uh, just want to know I appreciated you being there. Never called you before. I figured now it's about, about time I did. Well, that's, I'm glad you did. I'm glad you got one through before we... Signed off. Yeah, me too. And I appreciate it. Yeah, you do a good job out there. Thank you very much. Neil? Uh, yes, Bruce. Goodbye. That's Bruce's regular voice, folks. That's that's the one that he uses around the station when he's not doing the news. Hello there. Neil? Yep. Yeah. Got another song for Jack Potts. Another, another execution song. Go. A Rolling Stone song by the name of Why Don't We Do It in the Road. The Rolling Stones had a song, Why Don't We Do It in the Road? Yeah. Let's get no, that was a Beatles song. Was it? Yeah. Sorry about that. Shows what you know. Hey, let's get him out in public where we can all see it. Uh, yeah, why not? Really? Yeah. You know, when 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 they finally get rid of Jack Potts, it'll save a lot of a lot of innocent lives. Really will. It will, no doubt. The opinions expressed over WRNG North Atlanta are not necessarily those of Ring Radio Management or Ring Radio Advertisers.